This topic is called moles. Now, in chemistry, we're not talking about the animal, the mole. Uh, we're talking about a special amount or a, a word that represents a number. Just like uh, in, in our everyday common language, a dozen means 12, a million um, tells you how many there are. Um, mainly a dozen is, I guess, a better example, but you get the idea. So a mole means 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of whatever it is we're talking about. So we could have a mole of atoms, we could have a mole of molecules, you could have a mole of marbles, although it would be quite a bit. Now, um, so it's just a number. Now, why specifically this number? Um, and when you take it out of scientific notation, I put commas in just to give you an idea of how large the number is. This would be your hundredths, your thousands, your millions, your billions, your trillions, and then three whole units pass or three number sets past that. Um, why this specific number? Well, here's the reason why. In our last video, we learned the gram formula mass, which was the mass of the formula in grams. But that's not what it really weighs, meaning one C6H12O mo C6H12 molecule would never weigh 180 grams. What it weighs is 180 atomic units, okay? Now, here's what the mole does. If you have a mole of this many molecules, instead of atomic units, it will weigh 180 grams. But you don't have one of them, you have a mole of them, so that number. So basically what the mole is used for is it allows us to take quantities that we would never be able to weigh on our own and puts them into more usable, workable terms. In other words, the gram. It's, it's how many molecules you need to convert a atomic mass unit to a gram, or how many of them you would need to add them up. Okay, now there's a formula that we use. One mole equals the grams over the gram formula mass. We're gonna do a couple problems, and then you're gonna have a castle learning on this. So here's how it works. Number one, they say you have 0.15 moles of NH3. How many grams would that be? That's what this question is asking. So we write the formula out. Always write it out like this. And always include the formula that we're talking about next to the GFM. Or if you put it next to the moles, it just has to be there somewhere. So here's what they give us. They give us 0.15 moles. They want grams. But being that we know the formula, we know that this thing, if we add it up, it weighs 17. And so now I can solve this problem. To solve this, it's going to be pretty easy. Make two fractions, cross multiply, solve for x, and you end up getting 2.6 grams of NH3. And that's it. Uh, there's only three ways you can do this problem. In other words, I can put the x in the gram formula. In the gram spot, I can put the x in the mole spot, or I could put the x in the GFM and say, um, what would the mass or the GFM be? That wouldn't necessarily get you the formula, but it, you'd at least know how much that formula should weigh. So it's really, it's, think of it like the density formula. There's only three ways to do it, and that's pretty much it. So let's do some more, and then you'll see how, you know, how hard they can potentially get, which isn't very hard at all. 100 grams of water, how many moles would that be? Well, We know that the GFM of water is 18. We did that in our last video. They gave me 100 grams. They wanna know how many moles. So just divide and you get 5.6 moles of water. It's that simple. Next one, uh, uh, 10 moles of this, how many grams would it be? The only problem or the most difficult part here in reality is just figuring out the GFM of that because it tends to be a little larger um, and it has a parentheses in it, but you should be able to do that. They give me 10 moles. They want grams. When I calculate my GFM, I end up getting 262 for my GFM, cross multiply to solve, and you get 2,620 grams of, I'm not going to write it out, but of that. Next one, how many moles are in 180 grams of phosphorus? So this is phosphorus, it's an element. The formula for phosphorus is just P because it's an element, it's not actually a compound, it's not made of two or more different elements. Um, your GFM would just be the atomic mass of a single P atom. So moles equals GFM. The GFM here is just gonna be P. So in this case, it is 31. 
Let me double check. I believe that is correct. Okay. And they give me 180 grams and they want to know how many moles. So, Five point eight moles of P. And there's my answer. Okay. Uh, next problem. They want to know what's the mass of four moles of zinc chloride. Now, the issue with these types of problems is one thing we have not learned yet is naming. So for you guys, I would always give you the formula, but depending on uh, at what point in the year we're in, you could get the formula or you could get the name and you'd have to figure out that zinc chloride actually has two chlorines and not just one. Um, the name doesn't really tell you how many of each. So, there is my setup. So, My GFM for zinc chloride should be 135. Well, there's my answer. Last question. You have a 105 gram sample of nitrogen gas. Again, this is another tricky one. Nitrogen gas uh, is just pure nitrogen, which normally you would think would be just N. But since nitrogen is part of these special elements we mentioned, uh, it's a fake word we made up. It's called Brinkelhoff. I don't care how you remember it, but there are seven elements on the periodic table that do not exist as monoatomic elements. They exist as diatomic elements. It's these seven. So for this question, even though they didn't tell you in the name, they just called it nitrogen, they would expect you to know that it was diatomic and that it would, in fact, be N2. So when we did our formula... They would expect you to know that nitrogen gas is actually N2 and that it weighs 28. 105 is my is my mass. Solve for moles. And I get 100. Notice how I'm labeling my answers. With these top three, you really didn't have to label your answers as much because it was implied in the question. With these bottom three, these would be more of like uh, what you would see on a Regents exam. Uh, you would have to then give me the actual formula. You'd want to know what this is because if you just say 540 grams, the person grading it would look at it and say, well, 540 grams of what? Um, there could be multiple chemicals in a single equation. And so therefore, if you don't specify what you're talking about, they could mark it wrong. But this concludes uh, the mole formula. There will be a castle learning on this uh, up tonight.